What's up, everyone? It's Fuzzy. Welcome back to yet another MLB recap. I have not said that intro in a while, but Shohei Otani, he might be getting some reps in the outfield this year. Yeah, that could very much happen. Shohei's former teammate, Mike Trout, it's still weird to say that out loud, but he's dealing with the Angels owner, Artie or Art Moreno. I never remember how to say his first name, nor do I care to remember. He's basically begging his owner to go out and sign more free agents. Not only that, but we have a few huge health and roster updates and also Joey Votto. Yeah, he's still banging, but this time, for the Toronto Blue Jays. Now, before we get into all of that mess, I want to show you guys this dude, Cam Shulk on Mississippi State. Look at him making that play. So, first of all, he's a submariner. Second of all, he's a shortstop masquerading as a submarine pitcher. If he ever makes it to the big leagues, I will not be downloading MLB The Show because he's going to be impossible to hit. By the way, MLB The Show 24 just came out, and I've been posting it every single day on my gaming channel, Fuzzy Gaming. Head on over there because we're going to be doing some giveaways here soon. All right, so let's talk about a few health updates that are going to be affecting fantasy baseball rosters across the world. So we have Yuri Perez going down, and Yuri Perez was so good last year. A 3.15 ERA and 108 strikeouts in 91 innings. He was one of the best young pitchers in baseball. Now, unfortunately, he's going to be missing some time over the next few days and weeks to get some imaging on his elbow. So he joins Sandy Alcantara, Edward Cabrera, Braxton Garrett. Those three guys on the injured list for the Marlins. I mean, this rotation one through four could be one of the best in baseball if they were simply healthy. So now they have Jesus, Lazardo, AJ Puck is trying to be stretched out to be a starter again. Trevor Rogers is back. Ryan Weathers. I mean, the Marlins pitching staff is kind of in shambles right now, and it's not their fault. It's just injuries and pitchers have been going through the roof lately. Johan Duran is going to be missing some time as well, so those save opportunities, I don't know who they're going to go to if you're a Twins fan or just a fantasy baseball fan who has Johan on your team, but he is experiencing oblique soreness right now, which is awful. If you've ever had an oblique injury, playing baseball is almost impossible. They're really doing any Thing because the side to side lateral movement, it's just excruciating pain. So, Johan Duran on the shelf as well. Another fantasy stud that is on the shelf, TJ Friedel. He's going to be missing some time as well with a broken wrist. And last year, he had an almost four war because he had 18 home runs, 27 stolen bases, and a 118 OPS plus. So, first, Noel B. Marte got banned for PEDs. Now, TJ Friedel is going to be missing a large part of the first half of the season. Hopefully, he comes back quicker than the diagnosis and the prognosis. But if there is someone that is going to be taking his place, it could be a prospect by the name of Reese Hines. He's a 23-year-old outfielder that has played some time at third base. So he can be a nice depth piece, someone who can play third base or the outfield. Last year, he had 23 home runs, 20 stolen bases, a near 870 OPS, and almost 15 outfield assists in 115 games. That's impressive. He's an athlete, but also because he's an athlete, just like every other raw, talented prospect coming up, he does have a pretty bad strikeout issue, so keep that in mind. Joey Votto went yard on the very first pitch that he saw as a member of the Jays. So again, first pitch. I think this is against Zach Wheeler. So this is very impressive. Do you think that Joey Votto is going to crack the open day roster or do you think it's going to take a few months or not at all? Where do you think Joey Votto ends the 2024 season? Staying with spring training and home runs, Kyle Stowers of the Orioles is having one of the best spring trainings of all time. At least in terms of power production, he has seven home runs already and 37 at bats. I believe the record is is held by another Oriole. I think his name is Jake Fox way back in the day. I can't remember the exact record. I'm pretty sure it is 10 by Jake Fox, but Kyle Stowers is quickly approaching that. Also, O'Neill Cruz, as I was recording this video, just bopped his sixth home run. He has six home runs and 30 at-bats. He's hitting 333 with an almost 1,400 OPS. I know it's spring training. We have to take it with a grain of salt, but O'Neill Cruz has the talent to be one of the best power speed threats in baseball. I am just praying that he stays healthy and also Byron Buxton. I just got this update as well. Byron Buxton, one of the most talented players in baseball, but he has dealt with injuries after injuries. He's being withheld from the lineup today with another injury. I don't know what's going on. I think it's back soreness or it could be an oblique thing. Byron Buxton, just keep him in a bubble. We need him to play 150 games. Down the right field line. There's a drive to right field. And look at this. He's done it again. Before we talk about Shohei Otani and Mike Trout, a few more things real quick. The Guardians have reassigned Kyle Manzardo to AAA, even though he almost hit 400 in spring. He just doesn't fit the current Guardians mold of slap hitters that like to steal bases and play great defense. Apparently, they do not like talented hitters with really nice pop. They just want to keep them in the minors or trade them, apparently. And also, one of the better rookies from last year, an all-star from last year as well, Bryce Elder. He has been optioned. Ronaldo Lopez, who the Braves acquired from the White Sox, he is currently penned as the five starter. So he's not going to be a relief pitcher anymore. And because of that, he's not throwing 98 to 99 like he used to. He's hovering right now about 94, 95 in spring training right now as an opener. And he's nasty. If they can get that 
command in check and he's not going to be walking four or five guys per nine like he used to he could be a nice little five option another guy that just barely made it as a five starter Gavin Stone will be the Dodgers five starter opening the season and currently in spring training he has been untouchable he has a 0.93 ERA and nine strikeouts and almost 10 innings pitched he's got some nasty nasty stuff I can see why they have not traded this kid over the last few years when they've made so many trades another young guy making the opening day roster Jackson Merrill who is one of the better shortstop prospects in baseball he has made the opening day roster for the Padres as their starting center fielder he is one of the youngest starting center fielders in the history of baseball right now he's 20 years old but when the season actually starts he'll just be 21 he turns 20 on the 19th so again one of the youngest starting center fielders we've seen over the last 50 or 60 years and by the way he did earn it he had three doubles two home runs two stolen bases while hitting 351 in spring he only struck out three times and 37 at bats that's very impressive for a guy who's not even 21 at the time of this recording Dylan Cease made his Padres debut yesterday and his slider was looking disgusting in the first inning and again this is the first time that we've seen him in that brown Padres uniform this is in Korea and staying with Korea someone who's from Korea Ha Sung Kim who is obviously with the Padres he is facing off against the LG twins and look at what he did he smashed two home runs two of them in his homeland that has to feel really cool they're playing in the Seoul series or the seal I don't know how to say that first word I'm really sorry now one other player I do want to talk about who or Wu Suk Go if I'm botching these names I'm so sorry they're brand new okay cut me some slack but Wu Suk Go he played for the LG twins last year and all the years prior from 18 years old to 24 years old and yesterday he gave up a two-run home run before getting the save but I thought that was cool his former dugout was loving it now staying with the say all series and a team in that series the Dodgers and the Padres they'll be facing off at 3 a.m the very first game of the 2024 MLB season mark it down 3 a.m uh yeah well, I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna be up for that I'm not gonna lie but the manager of the Dodgers Dave Roberts came out and said that Shohei Otani when he comes back to the states he will finally be starting a throwing regimen he's not going to be pitching in 2024 but he actually said that Shohei could get some opportunities in the outfield and if you guys don't remember Shohei used to be a pretty a decent outfielder when he played in Japan when he was a 18 19 year old obviously he has a rocket for an arm I would love to see Otani in the outfield so we can get some defensive versatility in MLB the show and Shohei Otani's former teammate Mike Trout uh, he's basically said that he is pushing the owner of the Angels to go out and add a guy who has 30 home runs. He's talking about J.D. Martinez. Just unfortunately, his owner is one of the worst owners in sports. He always spends his money on the worst players or he doesn't spend his money at all. So the GM of the Angels has been lobbying the owner to try and get a Blake Snell, a J.D. Martinez, and Moreno. He has held fast and said that we are not doing that. Blake Snell, at least to this point, this is according to Ken Rosenthal on foul territory. So Mike Trout and the GM of the Angels, they are trying to get Moreno to spend money, but he's not doing it. And if you're an Angels fan, I'm so sorry. Well, that's going to do for today's recap. I know we went a little bit quicker. I just have a lot of things to do today, just off the field stuff. But I hope that you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like and enjoy some web gems. Fly ball, shallow right, late break for Tatis. And Fernando will make the catch, goes into us. Lines it into left, and that ball will be caught by Palacio. That's when you get the 50, 60, 70 steals in one season. 2-2 two -two line to center, a dive from Desan Brown, and he made the catch. And now a ground ball, diving stop at second by Triolo from his knee, throws to first, what a play!